And here, my pharmaceutical kitchen, a biochemical laboratory, fermenting an alchemy of life. Somewhere among these elementary ingredients lurks a formula for Joe's health. As the fire transmutes water into steam, catalyst for transubstantiation of lobster flesh. Bacterial cultures evolve and expand in yogurt and in yeast. The high ceiling, a roiling cloud of soot of steam, of scents and savours from experiments and accidents. A volunteer getting into an abandoned tram by Nelson's Pillar and trying to ram another tram at Earl Street to create a barricade. He throws a bomb at the half-wreck, but it doesn't explode. That is when I see Joe come out of the GPO with his Mauser pistol. When we were practising at Larkfield, we discovered you could only aim a revolver as part of a movement. Joe takes aim and lets off one perfect shot at a distance of 30 yards. The bomb goes off, shattering the chassis and the tram settles down on its bogies to act as an admirable barricade. He was always a beautiful shot. That was the last time I saw Joe. One swallow and it was gone. But if I cut my hands around my mouth, breathed out, and then in, I could inhale warm, sweet coffee again. It was like that when I heard Joe playing his fiddle. He was very ill then, the TB gnawing away at his frame. But it didn't slow his brain one bit. I sometimes think his ferocious intelligence was part of his revolutionary spirit. The more the disease took of his body, the more he put into his mind. So he would sit, propped up in bed, in between the many visitors and intense discussions. The fiddle would find its way under his chin. And as he stroked the bow over its strings, the sound that came out was crisp, playful, and witty. No slow airs or funeral dirges from him. He preferred ragtime cowboy Joe. They got his name singing through the cows and sheep. They played it every night and sing to her to sleep in a fat old voice so rich and deep. A crooning soft and low. He always sings. 
back and forward in the saddle on a horse. That is me to pay the data. And the front of the front of the to the road. This is how they run. When the air is drunk, because the western folks don't know. He's a hyperloper, Rufus Cuban, son of a gun from Arizona, right time cowboy show. Sunday in his Sunday clothes, he beats it to the village where he always goes, and every single gal in town is Joe's, cause he's a right time man. When he starts to feel it on the dance hall floor, no one but a lunatic would start a war, because the white men know his 44, what makes them dance for fair. He always sings, raggy music to the town, raggy queen. Back and forward in the saddle on a horse. That is being a better gator than the front of funny leader to the road. His repeater, how they run. When the hair is run, because the western folks all know. He's a hyperloop, and rope, shoot, and son of a gun from Arizona. Right time, how boys go. Standing in the hard, grey rain for twenty hard, grey minutes. Their eyes locked in silent communion, awaiting his final Hard, grey, dawn. Did some spark pass between them then, a parcel of unlived life, a baton passed backwards from dying son to long-lived father? The hard sound of grey rifles awakening our ageing father to the certainty of his son's death. One day, the Cinderella girl's sister, Moya, wanted to go to a ball at Dublin Castle. The Cinderella girl thought it was all very silly and didn't want to go, but her sister begged because she needed some new clothes. So the sisters agreed and they did get some new clothes and dressed up to go to the garden party. The coach was at the door and the sisters were coming down the stairs when their mother said, You can take off your finery. You're not going anywhere. She locked the sisters' invitation in the study, pocketed the key and left the house with an ugly laugh. <laughs> but the Cinderella girl found Jack, the youngest brother, put a table outside the house and put a chair on top of the table. Jack climbed up, up, up and into the study through the window, grabbed the gold-edged invitation, then escaped out the window, onto the chair, onto the table and back to his waiting sisters. And they did go to the ball. They saw their ma and ma saw them, but couldn't say anything in polite company.
the bad man are, and the only friend the guy who isn't in this car. The roughest man, the toughest man by far is ragtime cowboy Joe. He got his name from singing to the cows and sheep. They say that every night he sings the hearse to sleep in a fat old voice so rich and deep, a crooning soft and low. He always sings ragged music to the cattle as he swings. Back and forward in the saddle on a horse. That is make the baby gators and the crunch of funny meager to the roars. His repeater, how they run. When the air is run, because the western folks all know. He's a high polluter, rootin' shootin' son of a gun from Arizona. Right time, cowboy Joe.